dot product. Let's start with two vectors u and v, u having components u1 and u2, and v with components v1 and v2. Then the dot product of u and v, written u dot v, is u1 v1 plus u2 v2. Similarly, in three space, if u has components u1, u2, and u3, and v has components v1, v2, and v3, then the dot product of u and v is u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus u3 v3. Let's look at some examples. Now's a good time to pause the video, try these examples yourself, and then resume the video to check your answers against mine. All right, so let's find the dot product of the given vectors. First, we have the vectors in two space, two, three, and negative one, four. So let's take their dot product. We get two times negative one plus three times four, which is negative two plus 12 or 10. Okay, now the dot product of these two vectors in three space, i minus 2j plus k dotted with 2i plus 3j minus k. So we have one times two, which is two. Negative two times three is negative six, and one times negative one is negative one. Add those up, and we get negative five. Theorem. Right, let's look at some properties of the dot product. u dot v is equal to v dot u. In other words, the dot product is commutative. u dot v plus w is equal to u dot v plus u dot w. So in other words, the dot product distributes over addition. k times u dot v is equal to ku dot v, and it's also equal to u dot kv. In other words, we could take the dot product of two vectors and then multiply it by a scalar, or we could multiply one of the vectors by the scalar first and then take the dot product and we'll always get the same thing. V dot V is equal to the length of V squared. And the zero vector dotted with any vector V is the scalar zero. As an example, let's prove the commutativity. All of the proofs are pretty straightforward. I recommend you try the rest of them on your own, but let's do this one as an example. And we'll do it in two space. The argument for three space is nearly identical. Okay, so let's start with u dot v and write it in component form as u1, u2 dot v1, v2. By definition, that's u1, v1 plus u2, v2. Now, u1, v1, u2, and v2 are all real numbers, so we can use properties of real numbers. In particular, we can use the fact that multiplication is commutative in the real numbers to rewrite u1, v1 as v1, u1, and u2, v2 as v2, u2. And v1, u1 plus v2, u2 is precisely the dot product of v1, v2 with u1, u2, or v dot u. So we have it, u dot v is equal to v dot u for vectors u and v in two space. Angle between vectors. So first I just want to mention that when we're talking about the angle between vectors, we always mean the smaller angle between them. Here we see a picture of vectors u and v with an angle of theta between them. Uh, the angle theta will always be between zero and pi, or between zero and 180 degrees. The larger angle that would go counterclockwise from u to v is not the one we're usually talking about when we say the angle between vectors. Okay, so our big theorem on the angle between vectors is that the dot product of two vectors u and v is equal to the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of theta, where once again, theta is the angle between those two vectors. Okay, so we'll go through the proof of this theorem. You may wanna pause the video and challenge yourself and see if you can write out a proof of this theorem yourself first. As a hint, you're going to use the law of cosines, okay? So I'm going to go through the proof. Now at any step along the way, you may wanna 
pause the video and try to finish the argument yourself, especially after the first initial steps, which are the trickiest. Okay, so as I said, we're going to use the law of cosines. I'm going to start by drawing another vector in our picture to form a triangle. Notice I'm drawing the vector from the terminal point of V to the terminal point of U. That is precisely the vector U minus V. Now, using the law of cosines, we have the square of the length of U minus V is equal to the square of the length of U plus the square of the length of V minus two length U length V cosine theta. Now we're going to do some algebra using the theorem that we just discussed before this one. So first of all, remember that V dot V is the length of V squared. So the length of U minus V squared can be written as U minus V dot U minus V. And then we could use the fact that we have distributivity and commutativity to FOIL that expression. So we get u dot u, which again is just the length of u squared, minus u dot v, minus v dot u, which by the commutativity could be just be written as negative 2 u dot v. And negative v dot negative v is positive the length of v squared. Now notice that we could cancel out the length of u squares from each side of this equation, and similarly for the length of v squared. Finally, we divide by negative 2 to get our result. Okay, let's look at an example. Once again, pause the video, try to do this example yourself, and then resume the video to check your answer. Okay, so we want the angle between these two vectors, 2i plus 7j plus 6k, and i minus 2j plus 2k. So by the theorem, we could write the cosine of theta is u dot v over length u, length v. We could bring length u and length v to the other side of the equation because they are not zero, right? Because the vectors we're looking at here are not the zero vector. Okay, so u dot v, we have 2 times 1 is 2, 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, 6 times 2 is 12, we're going to add those up, and since the numerator comes out to 0, we don't even need to compute the denominator, so we see that the cosine of theta is 0, now since theta, remember, is always an angle between 0 and pi, theta must be pi over 2. Since theta is pi over 2, or 90 degrees, the vectors are perpendicular. And in this case, we'll also say that the vectors are orthogonal. For the purposes of vectors in two space and three space, the definitions of perpendicular and orthogonal are equivalent. However, they do have different meanings overall. Perpendicular is a geometric definition, which basically says that two things intersect at right angles. Whereas orthogonal is an algebraic definition, which says that the dot product of two vectors is zero. Orthogonal can apply to more general settings than perpendicular, but for our purposes, they are equivalent. Now, from this theorem, we see that the sign, by sign I mean S-I-G-N, whether it's positive or negative, not the trigonometric function, the sine of u dot v is the same as the sine of cosine theta, right? Because length u and length v are both never negative. So u dot v and cosine theta must either both be positive or both be negative, unless, of course, one is zero. Okay, so in the case where the dot product is positive, we have an acute angle. In the case where the dot product is negative, we have an obtuse angle. Right, because cosine of theta is positive when theta is between 0 and pi over 2, and cosine of theta is negative when theta is between pi over 2 and pi. Okay. And finally, the dot product being 0 is equivalent to having a right angle between the two vectors, or theta being pi over 2. The 0 vector is orthogonal to every vector. Right, because the dot product of zero with anything is zero. 
Okay, so we say that two vectors u and v are orthogonal if and only if u dot v is zero. Vector projection. So here we have a picture of two vectors v and b together with the angle theta between them. If we draw a perpendicular from the terminal point of v until it hits the vector b, then the vector in red there, which is a vector along b, but that stops at that perpendicular, is known as the projection of v onto b. Okay? Q here is the vector projection of v onto b. We would like to figure out a formula for Q in terms of the vectors v and b. Okay, well, as a starting point, notice that Q, or the projection of v onto b, can be written as the length of Q times a unit vector in the direction of b, namely b divided by the length of b. So getting this formula now just amounts to figuring out what the length of Q is. And we could use a little basic trigonometry to figure that out. So using the cosine formula, that cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, we see that the cosine of theta is equal to the length of the red vector, which is just the length of Q, divided by the length of V. And using our previous theorem about the dot product, we can rewrite cosine theta as V dot B over the length of V times the length of B. And since we have length of V in the denominator on both sides of that equation, we could cancel it out. And we see that the length of Q is V dot B over the length of B. Substituting back in to the first equation on the top there, we see that the projection of V onto B is V dot B over the length of B times B over the length of B. Or if we want, we could simplify that as V dot B over the length of B squared times B. And that is our projection formula just in terms of the vectors v and b. It's worth pointing out that the expression v dot b over the length of b has a special name. It's called the scalar projection of v onto b. We may write that as comp sub b of v, pronounced the component of v along b. So that's another name for it, the component of v along b or the scalar projection of v onto b. Okay, let's try an example. Once again, pause the video, try this example yourself, and then resume the video to check your answer with mine. All right, so let's find the projection of the vector v being 4i plus j on the vector b being 2i plus 3j. Okay, so the projection of v on to b is v dot b over the length of b times b over the length of b. V dot B is 4 times 2, which is 8, and 1 times 3 is 3. We're going to add those up. The length of B is the square root of 4 plus 9, or the square root of 13. So we get 11 over 13. We get the 13 by multiplying root 13 times root 13. And then just distributing that through, we get 22 thirteenths I plus 33 thirteenths J. Let's look at a picture of this. So here's the vector v. Notice we go right 4 up 1 from the origin because it's 4i plus j. And the vector b, we go right 2 and up 3. And to get the projection, notice we drop a perpendicular from the terminal point of v down to b. And we see that red vector there is the projection of v onto b. Okay, now it's worth mentioning that if we form this green vector here, it's equal to V minus the projection of V onto B, right? Because when we add the red one and the green one, we get V. So V minus the red one is equal to the green one. Okay, that has a special name as well. It's pronounced O-R-T-H sub B of V, orth sub B of V. And it's 
read as the vector component of V orthogonal to B. Let's go ahead and compute that simply by doing a subtraction. The vector V, remember, is 4i plus j. The projection that we just found is 22 thirteenths i plus 33 thirteenths j. And when we subtract, we get 30 over 13i minus 20 over 13j. Okay, and I just want to finish by mentioning that what we've done is we've decomposed the vector v into a sum of two vectors, one which is parallel to b, namely the projection, and one which is orthogonal to b, 